Welcome to my channel Daily Bulletin News. Bobby comes clean with Jida as Connie sets him up. Plus, Body and Soul finds its lead actress. Channel wakes up in bed, panicked that she's late to open the bakery. Johnny reminds her she took the morning off, so the morning belongs to them. He kisses her, but she stops him. She has to take her birth control pill first so as not to risk getting pregnant again too soon. Johnny assures her it's okay if she doesn't want to ever try again. Channel can't wait to have a baby with him, when the time is right. If he's good with that. Showing her how he feels about it, he resumes kissing her. At the body and soul office, Abby and Kate prepare for their open casting call. Kate opens the door to their first actress, Marlena's lookalike Hattie Adams. Hattie explains she was off trying to find herself, but she didn't fit in anywhere. Then she remembered she fit in in Salem while pretending to be Marlena. It occurred to her that her calling is to be an actress, and she looks just like the actress who played Charlemagne. Jada calls Stephanie to report that she told Marlena their theory that Everett is still Bobby. While Marlena couldn't divulge information, Jada deduced she agrees with them. Leah wanders by Stephanie's table in the square and overhears. What did Everett do now? Stephanie hangs up with Jada, ordering Leo to put away his notebook. He doubles down, demanding she dish. Stephanie agrees to, but this goes no further than this table. Connie comes to Bobby's Salem in room with a box of donuts. Bobby panics over them being seen together since he told Jada he knows who killed Lee. Flashing back to overhearing Jada tell Stephanie, she thinks Bobby stabbed Rafe. Connie says she's not worried. Bobby makes it clear he never wants to see her again. Your wish is my command, she says. Before she leaves, she asks for money for the donuts which she bought for him to woo Jada. He begrudgingly pulls out his wallet to give her cash. She asks for a donut to go and swipes a card from his wallet when he turns his back. At the station, Helena tells Jada she wants her to be the interim commissioner. After some hesitation, Jada agrees. She will work non-stop to find Rafe's attacker. Helena notices Lee's file on Jada's desk. Jada explains she reopened his case after receiving new information that links Lee's attack to Rafe's. She has a plan that she hopes to execute today. Later, she calls Everett and invites him to the station. He grabs the box of donuts and heads out. Once he's gone, Connie returns using the key card she swiped. In the square, Stephanie tells Leo that Everett broke up with her. Leo thinks something's off, considering how much Everett used to talk about her. He also recalls having to call out his name three times before Everett would respond. He gasps. What if he's really Bobby? Stephanie tells him to drop it and leaves. Alone, Leo smirks. When have I ever stayed out of anything? At the body and soul office, Hattie bombs her audition. However, she shows real emotion upon apologizing for exploding at Abby over his notes. He says if she can tap into that, she won't just be playing Charlemagne, she'll be her. Hattie jumps up and down, assuming she got the job. Kate rolls her eyes. Abby asks Hattie to step out for a moment. Kate tells Abby that Hattie is terrible. Abby says they can hire an acting coach because her look is too good. Kate defers to him and calls Hattie back in. Abby hires her. Hattie celebrates and then shows Abby her best fairway soap opera stare. Paulina meets Channel and Johnny at the pub. The couple share their plans to have a baby someday, assuring Paulina they'll stay in Salem. Johnny explains he'll find work in Chicago or latch onto local unscripted stuff. When Abby joins them, Paulina prompts him to offer Johnny a job. Abby knows it's not a Hollywood blockbuster, but he does need a professional director. Johnny says that it would be doing what he loves with someone he adores and respects. With Kate in the office, Hattie looks over her contract. She tries to negotiate higher than scale with perks, but Kate doesn't budge. Does she want this role or not? Show me where I sign, Hattie angrily says. Everett comes to the station with the donuts as a peace offering for Jada. He apologizes for crossing the line in Rafe's hospital room. She notes he wasn't acting like himself. He tells her he's integrated now, having remembered things he blocked for years. 
She calls that a break for both of them since Bobby knew who killed Lee. That means he can tell her. Everett says it's fuzzy. Jeddah accuses him of really being Bobby who stabbed Rafe. She presses until he relents. He admits he's Bobby, but he didn't stab anyone. But I know who did. Wearing latex gloves in Bobby's hotel room, Connie types at his laptop. She then pulls out a plastic bag containing bloody gloves with Rafe's DNA on them. As she goes to plant them, Leo knocks on the door.